Hello agents and welcome back to another Division 2 video. Today I wanted to talk about how you can farm any gear in the Division 2. Now that the Division 2 Year 5 Season 3 Project Resolve has been released and a lot of improvements have been made to various items and gear in the game, it's a great time to start farming as it will be well worth it now since there are a lot more viable builds that can be made to better suit a wide range of playstyles. After the previous title update 20, many weapons have received a buff including the exotic AR, the Eagle Bearer. By the end of this video, you should have a solid understanding of how the loot system works, what drops where, and the fastest and most efficient way to farm any gear that you desire to attain. So we're cutting through all the misconceptions and BS rumors about what drops where here. Let this video be your go-to manual farming guide. So with that being said, let me show you guys a comprehensive guide on how you can basically farm any piece of gear in the Division 2. This farming guide is created for players who need a short manual for farming in Division 2. Whether you are a new player, returning player, or veteran player, you may still find some of the information in this video valuable. So let's dive right in. Let me first briefly lay the foundation here by saying that there is a general loot pool that contains all the gear and items in the game. Although there are some select few exceptions, like a few named items here and there, or some exotics, the general loot pool consists of a majority of the gear and items in Division 2. Knowing this should give you a better understanding of how the loot system works so you can make better decisions moving forward when you decide on what to farm for. A common misunderstanding for new players is that most, if not every piece of gear is sectioned off somewhere, which isn't true. However, I will be going over what specific pieces of gear may only drop in certain activities. So now, there are a few items here and there that are exclusive to different endgame content. For example, the Dark Zone, raids, and legendary missions, and even seasons and projects. So try and imagine the general loot pool as a blanket layered underneath everything and all the other loot pools that I will be going over here in a minute. So what that basically means is whatever you can get in the general loot pool can also be attained from any other loot pool in the Division 2. Next, we have the Dark Zone Loot Pool, which contains Dark Zone exclusive items. What that means, in other words, is that there are a select few named items as well as the system corruption gear set that may only be acquired in the Dark Zone or by opening up Dark Zone proficiency caches. So while this is the case, the general loot pool is still contained within the Dark Zone loot pool. You can kind of look at it as the general loot pool being the standard loot pool for every content in the game. In addition to this, certain named items can only be farmed outside of the Dark Zone. An example would be the Fox's Prayer Knee Pads. This named item will never drop for you in in the dark zone and can only be attained in the open world. One thing to keep in mind is that when I say open world, I'm talking about content directly outside of the dark zone. This includes resource convoys, control points, bounties, main story missions, etc. This does not include raids or missions like the summit or countdown. Check out this updated list of the dark zone exclusive items. Just pause the video if you need more time to examine this list. The next loot pool parties will be the raids, incursions, and legendary loot pools. In Tom Clancy's The Division 2, the raid loot pool consists of the general loot pool, but there are some weapons, gear sets, and exclusive cosmetic items that players can acquire by completing different raids. An example would be the exotic pistol called the Regulus, which can only be attained from the Operation Iron Horse raid, and the Euroboros exotic SMG may only drop for you in the Paradise loot incursion. This may change in the future, however, and the Ouroboros may enter the Dark Zone loot pool like the raid exotics. So now, you can attain the Eagle Bearer and the Ravenous in the Dark Zone. These two exotics, in case you didn't know, used to be raid exclusive. In Tom Clancy's The Division 2, the legendary loot pool consists of the Bighorn Exotic AR. So there is one exotic that was added to the Year 5 Season 3 Vanguard, which is a little trickier to get than the others. However, the good news is that acquiring the Vindicator Rifle is fairly simple. There's no lengthy project chain to complete. This exotic rifle is available to buy from a vendor. Specifically, it's available from the Descent vendor as it's exclusive to this game mode. Next, we have the Seasons and Projects loot pools. The launch of every new season comes with it, new named high-end items as well as exotics. Once the season becomes available, the new named items that come with the season go straight into the general loot pool except for the exotics. The exotics that come with the season may only be attained through the season reward track. For example, this current Vanguard season has the exotic Pistol Mosquito which can only be acquired from the reward track. 
Once you get this exotic from the reward track, it will then be placed in your own general loot pool, which means you will be able to farm for it. However, if you haven't completed the season reward and you know a friend who has, they may trade you the exotic if it drops for them since it will be in their loot pool. Does that make sense? I hope so. So once the season is over, then all the exotics that came with the season will be moved into the general loot pool. So if you happen to miss, let's say, the Ninja Bike exotic backpack from one of the previous seasons, you can now farm for it anywhere since it got moved to the general loot pool. The project's loot pool can vary depending on the specific projects being completed, as well as factors such as the player's level, progression, and difficulty settings. Some projects may offer rewards tailored to specific gear slots or weapon types, while others may focus on providing resources or materials for crafting and upgrading equipment. It's important to know that some projects will reward you with exclusive exotics upon completion. For example, in order to get the Regulus exotic pistol, not only will you need to complete the Operation Iron Horse raid, but you will also need to complete an assigned project followed after. So what are the best ways to farm for some of the best items in the game? Even though some exotics are exclusive to specific endgame content, it doesn't mean that it is a must have, except for the Ouroboros, that gun is a must have. But for the most part, everything that you will need to perform really well and run through endgame content with ease can be farmed in the general loot pool. One of the best endgame content to farm for the gear you need is Countdown and Summit. Not only will you be getting a ton of loot drops from both these missions, but you are also able to choose a specific targeted loot. For those of you who have no clue what targeted loot means, if you pull up your open world map and look at the bottom left corner where it says show targeted loot, you can toggle this option and voila. You can now see where specific pieces of gear, including weapons, brand sets, gear sets, and even mods are dropping. The targeted loot is randomized every 24 hours. Personally, I find it easier to just spam countdown on challenging or heroic since regardless of what is dropping where, I can simply choose what I want to drop and get what I need much faster, as opposed to waiting for the targeted loot to reset. Like, come on, let's face it, ain't nobody got time for that. So, Countdown is the go-to since you will be getting a ton of loot drops. There are other methods that work better depending on your build, SHD watch level, etc. If you'd like to see a more in-depth guide for fast ways to level up your expertise, then check out the video in the description or in the pinned comment. But to keep the video short, I'll just mention this. Some people like farming in the dark zone. And some people absolutely hate farming in the dark zone because of obnoxious players. I get it. What you need to do is decide the best way that works for you, what will be more time efficient and better suit your playstyle. So don't feel pressured into thinking you need to farm in the dark zone because there is better loot. Which leads me to the difficulty settings. The difficulty settings do have an impact on the quality of loot that you can attain. Basically, the higher the difficulty, the higher the chance of a god roll drop. However, you can still get god roll drops on the lowest difficulty, although there is one small caveat to this, and that is you won't be getting exotic drops whatsoever on anything lower than the hard difficulty. Another misconception I see many of you have is that directives have any sort of influence on the quality of loot that drops. They don't. Adding directives will only increase the amount of XP you get. They won't have any effect whatsoever on the quality of loot drops. The more directives you have on, the more XP you get. So that will be it for this video, guys. I wanted to keep it short, but if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comment sections and I'll be happy to help. This is Prajna. Take care, keep it cool, keep it classy, and peace out.